The first thing I'm going to show you is a few blending techniques because a lot of your art movements um, that you might choose, you're going to need to do at some point some blending. So you're going to look for the main color in your area that you're going to blend. So you'll put one color down. And then your next color, just grab a little bit. And you can work it directionally, like if it is a sunset or something, you want to work it directionally. And I just mix it right on the paper. Just feather it into one another like that. So let's say I have this dark color here. I might not need a whole lot of white. One thing you might want to have handy is like a Scott towel to wipe off your brush. See, I haven't put any water in here. If I put water in here, um, well, let's see what happens. It's going to thin it, but also maybe make it more transparent. And you'll be able to, if it's more transparent, you'll be able to see the canvas underneath a little more. So this is sort of directional blending that I'm doing right now. And I tend to like um, work kind of dry. I tend to not use a whole lot of uh, water. So another thing you can do to blend is scumble. And that's where you take your brush and you just make like a whole bunch of X's. That's if you want to blend a color that's not directional. You can scumble it. So the reason I'm getting these highlights, even though they look really cool, is because I had water in my brush. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of that red, a little bit of that edge. So I'll just keep going over it. Like if I have a very um, impressionistic painting, I might want to show my brush strokes, but if I have a painting that's really like atmospheric, I might want to blend this down a lot more. So you just keep going over it until it kind of starts to dry and smooths out. Now, if I have, I don't know, like, let's say this is the ocean and I have like a boat on top of my ocean, uh, sailing on my ocean, or an island, or if it's a sky and there's trees, I'm gonna let this dry. And I'll come back after it's dry and show you the next step. So I wanna show you a couple of things you might not find easily on um, YouTube. And that is how to paint a very straight line. So if you pick an art movement like pop art, op art, or hard edge, or de style movements, you're gonna need to be able to paint a straight line. And no matter how much you try to paint a straight line freehand, probably is never gonna be straight enough. So I'm gonna show you um, a tip is I use tape. So let's say you have your canvas and you've sketched in your painting on top of your canvas with pencil and you probably used a ruler to get straight lines with your pencil. So now you want to know how to paint that straight edge of the pencil line. And what you're going to do is you're going to get tape. And let's say I've painted a, a pencil line here. You're going to get your tape and you're going to line it up on your pencil line and the edge that's on your pencil line, you wanna push that down pretty good. Masking tape is what you're gonna to wanna to use. I don't think scotch tape would work. I mean, you can try it, but masking tape is gonna work better. So I'm pushing this edge down and of course, um, 
everything under it should be dry. This is really important. You're going to want to go this way off your, off your um, tape. If you go this way, you might be pushing paint under the edge of the tape. So you want to be going off the tape this way. So you can use your tape to get you the straight, crisp edge. You can also use tape to mask, <clears throat> to mask off an area. So when you peel it off, it should be completely a straight line. Let's say you don't have any masking tape at your house, but you want to do this straight edge thing. Let's see what happens if we use a the edge of a, this is just an, uh, an envelope. So you're going to hold it here like this and do the same thing where you um, go off the edge like this. So you have them going this way a little bit been this way a little bit, but I'm never going into the envelope like that. Trick here is you just cannot move that envelope. We'll see if this works. Doesn't work as good as the tape, but it might be better than freehand unless you're an expert pen striper or something. So it's probably better than freehand. If you decide to do pointillism, which is a really fun technique, bum, 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 an eraser. So I'm just going to dip my eraser in my paint. Not let it be too globby. gives you pretty big dots. I know your canvases are like the size of a sheet of paper, so this dot might be too big for you, but it is a really fun way to get dots. To show you about a landscape is that not all the time but to give the illusion of depth whatever's farther away it's going to be a little grayed out if i was going to do a landscape the first thing i would do is look to see what's the farthest away so let's say the sky is the farthest away I scumbled in a sky. So my green landscape, my field, it's far away. I am going to use green and white. And you know what? I'm going to add some black, the tiniest bit, just to gray it out a little bit. It looks a little too um, saturated still like a pure green. So I'm going to put a little black. Whoa, that's too much. Kind of gray it out a little, a little bit and atmosphere will do that. And as I get closer, I'll make it, I'll make it more green and less gray. And you guys know that grass isn't just green, right? There's probably going to be some other hints of color in there. So there's my really far away green. Here's my closer green. And even my closer green is going to be even punchier. see how this looks a little closer and that looks farther away 
I just wanted to come back and show you guys that after your first layer of paint is dried, you can come back on and put some details or some close-up images. So remember my landscape? If I wanted to have some trees, you would want to do this um, after that base layer has dried because you don't want to pick up any of that color. And then lastly, I was going to show you guys if you do like a color feel painting where you have all these colors, whether they're geometric, but they're all outlined in black. If you do it by hand, it's never going to be perfect. So you can mask off the colors you've already painted. This is going to be tricky because remember how I told you to, to only go one direction? The tapes are so close together. Not have my bristles to jab under the tape.